Hey, this is Brent with Lycans Motorsports. Good to be back with you guys. I've uh, had a couple of uh, stints in the hospital since past Sunday uh, with some different heart uh, arrhythmias, but uh, seem to be doing okay now, so I'm gonna get back into it. But uh, this is our crankshaft for our 351 Cleveland build. And uh, it's easy to be, I guess, sucked down the rabbit hole when, when you start a, an engine build. Um, you know, you start thinking of stroke or crankshafts, and, and then it kind of blows up into aluminum heads and new intakes. And, and then you end up with a, you know, $17,000, $18,000 engine. And uh, it's... It's a direction that not many people want to go. So for this engine, we have decided to reuse all the factory parts, except for the connecting rods, obviously, um, as the goal was about 400 horsepower. And, um, you know, if we start adding, um, you know, stroke cranks and, and that sort of thing, then you get to a point where this the factory cylinder heads and the intake can't keep up. So um, we're going to stay with this factory crank. So that kind of leaves us with the question of does it need to be ground or not? And um, I had put in Mr. Patrick's build sheet that we were going to have this ground because normally you got to mess with them a little bit, um, especially after, you know, 50 or so years. Um, the journals on this one look outstanding. Uh, don't have any wear. There's no Just a burnt oil line right in the middle of the rod journal basically So what I'm going to do and uh, it's got a pilot bushing in it So I got to wait for it to make sure that it doesn't topple over But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to measure um, And it'll be a limited uh, showing because a lot of using a micrometer is um is feel but uh what we what we're going to end up doing is micing the journal in like here and then turn 90 degrees to it and get it here and then just taking another reading down lower so that'll tell us if the journals are round it'll also tell us if the journals are tapered um, that's the benefit of a mic and a bore gauge. Uh, the guys that are using plastic gauge that, you know, they just won't get that sort of accuracy or precision. So we're going to go through and mic all these, including the rod journals. And I've even got a new pair of rod bearings, uh, just to check. This is a Clevite. It's an H series narrowed bearing. And what we'll end up doing is, since we have um, the eagle rods here, we will check and see what our clearance is with new bearings and those rods. And then, since I can get all kinds of bearings for the mains, I can get X bearings, I can get, you know, one under bearings, whatever, excuse me. Uh, but I can't do that for, for the rods. So it may be that our mains will stay standard, and I may have to have... The rods cut a thou or so, but uh, we won't know till we check it. So let's get ready to check it. Okay, first thing we always do is check our mic against the standard. Um, I do this every time I pick them up. Pretty close. Um... So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do one main journal. And then I'll do the rest of them myself because it gets pretty involved and tedious with all the number writing and such. Like I said, you, you'll have to develop your own feel. So we are at 27485 that way.
27486 that way. And then I'm going to get it down here a little bit lower just to make sure that it doesn't have any taper to it. And it doesn't. So that's pretty much the procedure to 27485, 27486. Um, if it's more than two or three ten thousandths out around or tapered, then it would need to be ground. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do all the mains and all the rods. All right, so I got all the mains done. They were all around 7485, 7486. Uh, all the rods are just right in there together, just a ten thousandth of an inch difference. So everything's looking good so far. Uh, I don't anticipate having to do anything but polish the mains. And um, obviously we'll do a crack check on, on the crank and get it washed up really good and everything. Um, but here's our Eagle rods and I've got a bearing pair inside. And these torque at 64 pound feet. So got those torqued up. I'm gonna set my board gauge up and um to to my mic and we'll check a bearing clearance real quick all right so we got our bore gauge set and um we've got about two eight two seven two eight on the gauge clearance um i would like to see at least um two three if not around two five so um that should work out fine because these are not coated bearings so we will lose about um a half a thou clearance um when we go when we switch to the coated bearing um so that would put us at around two three so um, by the time we polish that crank and uh get a a, a tenth or so off of it to to make sure it's polished and, and cleaned up we should be right around exactly where we need to be. So what I will do now, um, these were Mal A uh, 927 HN bearings. I will get another seven pair of these and then send them off to Calico and have them coated. But as, uh, we, we should be all systems go for using this crank with just a polish and, and, and a good cleaning, which is good. All right, guys, I know that was a short video, but I'm going to try to take it easy this weekend. Uh, we are still waiting on push rods for our 445. Smith Brothers said that uh, cut fully custom push rods could take a couple, three weeks. So um, it's a waiting game for that. Um, Mr. Dennis, I know that uh, I said I was going to pick your block up, but uh, I've had a couple of hospital stints this week. And... Um, it's pouring the rain today, so I uh, may not grab it today, but I'll, I'll be grabbing it soon, and uh, we can get started on uh, on your build. But um, hope you guys are having a good week. Uh, like I said, I'm going to go take it easy and um, get this crank dropped off uh, here pretty soon and continue work on, on the rest of these builds. Hope you guys are, are doing well, and uh, I'll see you soon.